so happy we alive. Okay, hello Louisville. Here we are. This is Patrick Moore at the Normal Conference in Washington, D.C. And I just happened to notice that the distinguished editor of High Times Magazine, Stephen Hagar, uh, happened to be in the audience. And uh, he graciously agreed to uh, say hello and uh, share a few sentiments with us. Um, Steve, I'm glad that you're here and glad to see everything that you're doing. But I can't help but want to take this opportunity to ask you a few uh, oh, pertinent questions, perhaps. Uh, as you know, billions of dollars is being spent uh, by a multitude of organizations to uh, do everything possible to suppress and distress anyone using any kind of uh, drug uh, in America and uh, as the editor of a magazine such as High Times, I'm curious as to uh, what your perspective on the situation is. Well, over the last few years I've been through quite a voyage, you know, of discovery. I, um, I discovered marijuana when I was 15 years old. I didn't think it was any big deal. I certainly, certainly thought it was less harmful than alcohol or tobacco, even as a kid. So I never understood what the problem was. But I later, you know, when I came to High Times Magazine, I wasn't a big time. I was like a weekend party guy. You hand me a joint, I'll take a hit on it, but I never had it, never paid for it, and really. I mean, I did in certain times of my life, but that wasn't where I was at. That wasn't why I came to High Times. I came to High Times because it's the only voice of the counterculture left. I feel like I'm a member of a community that came about in the 60s. And that community's been uh, persecuted since it basically its whole existence. And the drug laws is how the government persecutes my minorities. And the counterculture is a minority group. And we, we have to recognize that, yeah, we, we are a minority group. And yeah, it's like all these laws that are designed to railroad us into jail, that's really, uh, you know, restricting us from having our culture, basically, because, you know, this is our sacrament, and, uh, you know, we don't want to take sacraments away from anybody else, and we want freedom of religion in this country. So if we're going to have freedom of religion, we got to allow new spiritual cultures to emerge, nurture them, let them come to fruition. So this culture is only at its very beginning. What I discovered at High Times first was, it's not bad for you. People live longer if they use marijuana wisely. So, you know, so what's the problem? Then we discovered, well, you can, you know, make paper out of it, make your car out of it, make your clothes out of it. You know what I mean? The, the whole hemp thing. I go, why haven't we been told about this? And then, you know, my, my latest thing is, the birthing of all the major religions of the world takes place in Iran and India 5,000 years ago, and they're all drinking marijuana and milk. They call it bong, soma, ohioma, whatever you want to say. You can look at the formations of these great religions, and you see marijuana cults there. And I believe this is true. It does create spiritual cultures, and we are a spiritual culture. It does play a role in our culture. Give us some freedom of religion, please. Yeah. Well, you're getting right to the very essence of the uh, of the uh, dichotomy here, because uh, in all of the literature and the media expression of the war on drugs, <clears throat> the use of drugs is directly associated with crime, sociopathy, aberrance. Well, I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't really like the word, use of the word drugs because we're completely drug so it, it's not it's not uh, used. Kids to, kids grow up and they're fed sugar and caffeine drinks. That's a drug. A uh, crack is candy to a kid. Candy is like crack. It's the same thing. They can't stop eating it. So uh, you know we've got a culture that consumes Prozac. A third of the people are on antidepressants. So I don't even like to use the word drugs. Just, just call it medicines, because that's everybody's on them. I don't care, you know, some people are popping Ritalin, which is methamphetamine, but when they take Ritalin, it's not called a drug. 
it's called a medicine. But when we smoke pot, it's not called a medicine, it's called a drug. So let's just, you know, let's, we got to get rid of the whole uh, language that demonizing substances and the users of substances, all that vocabulary has to be just tossed out the window. Yeah, I, I agree with, uh, with you completely. Uh, it seems to me uh, there was a time in American culture or in human culture when uh, mind-altering substances such as marijuana, um, hallucinogenic mushrooms, was uh, peyote, were directly associated with spirituality. And it seems to tobacco. me... Tobacco. Tobacco even seems to me that it's part of, part of the essence of the... Uh, war on drugs has been to totally remove the spiritual element and replace it with a criminal yeah. frame, so to speak. And uh, in that context, it would seem to me like you, you, as the editor of High Times Magazine, might be considered by those who think in that way as the great Satan. Because, because of your advocacy of these mind-altering substances. Right. Well, I'm not advocating other people go out and take mind-altering substances. What I'm advocating is that I'm a member of a culture that's a minority group and we're persecuted. And it's a serious problem. And we're wasting billions of dollars destroying the lives of what I feel is my family. So I'm trying to celebrate my culture. And marijuana is a part of that culture. I can't deny that. It's, it's a big part of the culture. And uh, it's the sacrament of the culture. It can't get any bigger than that. So we're not going to give it up. No matter well, what. Well, Stephen Gaskin went to jail. Uh, Ken Kesey went to jail for marijuana. Stephen Gaskin went to jail for marijuana. Timothy Leary went to jail for mar marijuana. Neil Cassidy went to jail for marijuana. You look at all the tribal elders of this culture. They've all done time for marijuana. Have you personally and your associates ever had any problem with uh, no. the, uh, the uh, articles in the High Times magazines or has not been challenged? Or no, no, we're, no we're, we print factual information and, you know, we're, we have the defense. We're a, we're a publishing company. We can defend ourselves. You know, you, you don't. They don't go after people that can disseminate information to the masses. You know, we're not isolated and alone. We have a, you know, we have a, the resources to fight back and a big magazine to fight with. So, and a big website too. www.hightimes.com. And you feel the truth is on your side. Definitely. And do you feel like you're gaining momentum? That uh, no I, I don't. I don't care about case. momentum anymore. I used to think in the '60s that oh, we got to take over. Now I think no. Let's never take over. Let them run the country. Let them have all the problems. Let's create our culture. Let's share our ceremonies. Let's build our culture. Don't worry about their culture. They're in charge. They run the planet. We'll, you know, do our picketing. We'll do our little, you know, demonstrations. We'll try and put the right vibes out. But don't try and shoulder their responsibility. Just try and make it survive. Because you know what? This culture's been going on for 10,000 years, but there's these dark areas where it's wiped out and it takes thousands of years to come back. That's the way I feel about, you know, the 60s counterculture. It's nothing new. It was always there. But they burned the witches. That was the counterculture. So I'm saying that, you but, know. But the 60s counterculture was fairly effectively burned by the. Uh, 80s and the Reagan. Uh, oh no, they went after it with everything they could. That's what the drug laws are. They're a way to keep them down. You know, so that's what I'm saying. It's let's let's hang on to our culture. Let's not let it let them disappear it. So it has to be reinvented a thousand years from now. Let's just hang on to the counterculture vibes, the peace, love, tribe, and just make it grow. And like you know, a thousand years from now, they'll look back on this time and think how barbaric. You know, they did all these horrible things. You gave a great presentation, by the way. Did you guys happen to know where uh, that slide projector went to? Do you know the folks that... Uh, the there? guy's over there and the other thing, and i got to go uh, plug a camera in over there and run a sound check, so... Well, you obviously don't feel persecuted. <laughs> Me, personally? I feel, yeah, my culture is persecuted. Yes, I do. Yeah. But you feel like, uh, you feel like... I, 